Uh, my first question is, is, for, is for you, General. I just got back from a trip from Taiwan. Uh, it's the second trip to Taiwan in the past 14 months. Uh, I spent 20 years in the military, as my good friend August uh, Pfluger pointed out, our chairman pointed out. Uh, I know what war looks like. We're at war. I mean, uh, this is a war. Uh, it may be a cold war, but this is a war with China with the, the People's Republic of China every single day are invading Taiwan via their cyberspace. Uh, not only that, but the question I have for you is in particular, your, your expertise is in air. Uh, I spent five years as, a, uh, as an air crewman flying against China. I, I know exactly when they come out and they, they uh, intercept our, our aircrafts. Uh, they're doing that every single day. And there's a danger in that, right? Because everything is fine until there is an accident a spark, if you will, that turns a cold war into a hot war. Can you speak just to some of the dangers in which playing this game of chicken brings up, in particular, uh, to Taiwan? So, ab absolutely. China has demonstrated uh, significant aggression in the air by penetrating Taiwanese airspace, uh, and it, it is a violation of Taiwan's sovereignty. We've allocated $113 billion to Ukraine. We've actually only given them actually less than half of that. And on the military side, about 30 billion of roughly 60 billion. We've still got some runway to go there. Um, but I think we need to keep that commitment. And the truth is the Russian army is being chewed up by the Ukrainians. We had a, uh, we spent $800 billion a year on defense in most of my lifetime to prevent Russia from uh, ex exploiting that. We're having the Ukrainians do that right now in a sense in for us. I think we need to continue that. I think you will see um, the vast majority of members of Congress in both parties. There's some loud mouths on both sides that are pulling back. Um, but if we're going to keep in this competition against Russia and China, Putin cannot be successful. Can you respond to Governor Ron Sanders in Iowa today who said Florida is where world goes to die? So here's what I have to say. When Republicans extreme Republicans, these MAGA Republicans, uh, don't agree um, with an issue or with policy. They don't bring forth something that's going to either have a, a good faith conversation. They go to this conversation of woke. But that is not actually policy. But what, they, what that turns into is hate. What it turns into is desp despicable policy. Um, and it's just not the way we're going to move forward. This is not protecting freedoms. This is not having a good faith conversation on how we can move the country forward. This is about attacking, we're talking about attacking young kids and their parents because of how they view themselves, because of how they see themselves, because of how they want to live. Kids and their parents, what does that have to do with anything about being woke? That is just hate and it is, uh, it is shameful. It is shameful, and we're going to call it out. And like I said, the president is going to continue to say we have the back of, the, of that community or any vulnerable community. Do you have any response to him saying? Like, I've spent my whole life in the media. My dad was in the media. Like, that is a big part of the revelation that's changed my life is the media are part of the control apparatus. Like, there's no. Yeah, I know. I know. Because you're younger and smarter and you're like, yeah. Yeah. But what if you're me and you spent your whole life in that world? And to look around and all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, not only are they part of the problem, but I spent most of my life being part of the problem defending the Iraq war. Like I actually did that. Can you imagine if you did that? Well, what do you think? What is one of your biggest regrets in your career? Oh, defending the Iraq war. That is it? Well, I've had a million regrets, not being more skeptical, calling people names when I should have listened to what they were saying. Look, when you when someone makes a claim, there's only one question that's important at the very beginning, which is, is the claim true or not? Mm. So I say, you know, you committed murder or you rigged the last election before you attack me as a crazy person for saying that, maybe you should explain whether you did it or not. You You're know right. what I mean? Yeah. And for too long, I participated in the culture where I was like, anyone who thinks outside these pre-prescribed lanes is crazy, is a conspiracy theorist. And I just really regret that. I'm ashamed that I did that. And, and partly it was age, partly it was the world that I grew up in. So when you when you look at me and you're like, yeah, of course they're part of the means of control. I'm like, that's obvious to you because you're 28, but I just didn't see it at all, at all. And I'm ashamed of that. Isn't that what the media tries to do though? 
it, it's their only purpose. Right. They're not here to inform you. Really? Even on the big things that really matter, like the economy and war and COVID and like things that really matter that will affect you. No, their job is not to inform you. They are working for the small group of people who actually run the world. They're their servants. They're their Praetorian guard. And we should treat them with maximum contempt because they have earned it. And then, uh, Chris, what were you going to say? Well, to be honest, Bruce, because I, I did overhear the conversation just a bit earlier about what exactly the man was screaming about, I actually looked into these schizo posters and... I mean, I have to say, I am really not sure what I'm looking at here at all. Hey, uh, kind of, Chris, I think uh, we... Sure, visually they are very beautiful images, but there also seems to be quite a bit of concerning text laid over the artwork. Bruce, have you ever heard of the gateway process and the CIA's research into consciousness energy grids? Are you aware that this stuff is all real? I mean, the CIA actually conducted tests to determine... Hey, Chris, 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 uh, let's uh, try to keep this coverage on topic for our viewers for now. I'm sure that's all something we can get into later, but for now... I would just really appreciate it if we could focus on what's actually happening on the ground. This work to save more lives more quickly. First, this executive order helps keep firearms out of dangerous hands. As I continue to call on Congress to require background checks for all firearm sales. And in the meantime, in the meantime, my executive order directs my attorney general to take every lawful action possible possible to move us as close as we can to universal background checks without new legislation i just it's just common sense What motivates you to get up in the morning? How do you feel that you've endured this war? Money. Money me, money now. Many money. Joe Biden sent taxpayer money now. Green t-shirt, persuasion. Green t-shirt not needed. But money love, green t-shirt. Send money, many money. Love, Ukraine. Svjedočimo spaljivanju milijardi doza takozvanih cjepiva protiv covida diljem svijeta koje nitko ne želi. Spaljuju se milijarde eura poreznih obveznika koje nitko ništa nije pitao. 
Nitko nije pitao ništa ni na zastupnike koje su građani izabrali da štitimo njihove zdravlje i njihovu imovinu. Bilo bi bolje da smo odmah svi spalili sve cijepivo i spasili brojne živote i zdravlje građana. Ugovaranje kupnje 4,6 milijardi doza za 360 milijona punoljetnih građana Europske unije provedeno je u potpunoj magli i tajnosti, pretpunoj skrivenih SMS poruka, što ukazuje na zasigurno najveću korupcijsku aferu u povijesti Europske unije. Radi se u ugovoru teškom 71 milijardu eura koji je sklopljen zatvorenih očiju između von der Leyen i Burle, glavnog direktora Pfizera, a Pfizer je, kao što svi znamo, već osuđivan u Sjedinje američkim državama radi korupcije. Hvala. And, and, and it's ever evolving and evolving very quickly. It's just like vaccines. People will still go, ah, you, you, you got COVID even though you got a vaccine. What well, we didn't, we didn't know. None of us knew. You didn't know exactly how those vaccines would impact the virus. Um, but we've learned quite a few things about the vaccines too. There's a very resilient virus. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a very durable right. virus and, and, and it, it morphs very, very quickly. So, so develop a vaccine. And it still helps in a positive way, but it doesn't wipe out COVID. Can you explain what we've learned about vaccines yeah. over the last two years? Well, there's one very, very obvious fact that is borne up by very solid data. Joe, we know that if you compare unvaccinated people with vaccinated people with regard to hospitalizations and death, There is an overwhelming and dramatic difference of a greater likelihood of hospitalization and death among the unvaccinated. And as the months went by, if you compare vaccinated but not up to date with boosters, with people who are totally up to date on boosters, there's still a difference in the sense of vaccinated and updated boosted people do much better with regard to severity of disease. That's an open and shut case. There's no doubt about that, that vaccines work. But there's another thing that is a bit sobering that we learned, that this virus is so highly transmissible that when you're vaccinated, you may not necessarily get protected against infection, but clearly you get protected against severe disease. And that's caused a lot of confusion among people because when we went from the original wild type or ancestral strain of the virus that was spreading in January and February of 2020, as we evolved into different variants, including Omicron, it became much more transmissible, not necessarily more serious, but more transmissible. So people who were vaccinated were getting infected. But the critical issue that should not be lost is that the vaccination clearly prevented them, to, for the most part, from getting severity of disease. Those are the kind of things, Joe, that you mentioned, that as the months and the years went by, we learned more and more. And when you learn more and more, you've got to keep up with that information. That, that leads to the question, Joe, and would like the answer from you, Dr. Fauci, who you're the pride of Holy Cross College. Uh, and I don't believe you were in medical school with uh, Ted Cruz or Jim Jordan, but how many booster shots do you think we will be getting? Uh, there's one available now, but how, may, how long in the future will we be getting booster shots? You know, we don't know definitively the answer to that, but it is likely that this thing is not going to disappear. It's not going to be eradicated and it's not going to be eliminated. So it's going to be around, you know, for the foreseeable future. So it is likely that we will require an intermittent, likely at the same time as we get a flu vaccine, at least once a year, very similar to what we do to keep updated on our immunity against influenza. It is very likely that the similar situation we'll be experiencing with COVID, namely getting a booster shot once a year, probably at the same time as we get an influenza shot. 
I think as an LGBTQI leader, I think some of the things that's really helped me on my own journey is, you know, A, being really proud of who I am, you know, really owning my authenticity, because I think people relate and can relate to you so much better when they know you're being totally genuine, sincere and honest. I think also, you know, having had certain amounts of adversity on your own journey, I think that inbuilds into you a fair amount of sort of extra resilience, which then really helps empower your own sort of leadership skills. أنا أعتقد بأن الحرب العالمية الثالثة قائمة لكن اختلف الشكل يعني بالسابق كانت الحرب العالمية هي حروب تقليدية جيوش من عدة دول تعمل ضد عدة دول أخرى الآن هذا الوضع قائم ولكن بسبب الأسلحة المتقدمة وخاصة السلاح النووي فهناك قوة ردع عن الحرب التقليدية لذلك تذهب الحروب باتجاه الحروب بالوكالة لذلك زيلنسكي هو اليوم يقوم بالحرب نيابة على الغرب مع جيشه طبعا من النازيين نفس الشيء الإرهابيين هي جيوش تعمل نيابة على الغرب في سوريا وفي مناطق أخرى Let us look into an example of the conflict of interest between the industry and the government, also known as regulatory capture. The British Medical Journal highlighted the issues of conflicts of interest in the CDC. Since a major portion of the funding comes from the very industry, the CDC is supposed to oversee. And the FDA is not much better. Since nearly 75% of its funding also comes from the very industry, it is supposed to regulate. These are fundamental institutional conflicts of interest. No matter how many well-qualified people occupy positions in the CDC and the FDA, the very foundation is infected by this conflict of interest. So look, there's two categories of federal agencies. One category is federal agencies that should have never existed in the first place. That's like the Department of Education, where there's $80 billion spent on really worthless purposes, tilting the scales to four-year college education, a useless gender studies major that someone pays for in California, instead of two-year education, which many Americans could actually benefit from. Not to mention the fact that wokeism in the school comes from the Department of Education. So in those cases, I say shut it down, and it needs to stay shut down. Unbridled joy for Caroline van der Plas as her party shook up the Dutch political landscape on Wednesday evening. Founded just four years ago, the BBB is now projected to be the largest party in the Senate. This could mean we will be the biggest party in the Netherlands. This isn't normal, not normal. Well, actually, I do find it normal, but I never expected it. The elections that took place were provincial but they also indirectly decide the makeup of the country's National Senate. The BBB, or Farmer Citizen Movement, is projected to be the largest party in the Senate, with 15 out of 75 seats. The same amount as the Labour Party and Dutch Green Party coalition. Prime Minister Mark Rutter's party, VVD, is predicted to go down from 12 to 10 seats. And according to van der Plas, this will make the governing coalition take her party seriously. What does this mean for the coalition in the Senate? They already had a small majority, but now it's reduced to almost nothing. That means they have to start negotiating with BBB seriously. The BBB have rallied against the government's environmental policy since its formation in 2019, especially the government's aims to cut nitrogen emissions in half. The BBB says the problem has been exaggerated and that proposed solutions are unfairly balanced against farmers leading to the closure of many farms. The Prime Minister conceded that it was a tough night for his party. The VVD 
The VVD is now down half a percent in the exit poll. We go from 13.3% to 12.8%. That's not the win we wanted. We lost a little bit, half a percent. Rutter's government, in its fourth consecutive term since 2010, has dropped to a 20% approval rating, its lowest in a decade. If you need a single location to get cutting-edge information and keep up with the rapidly changing world around us, tune into Grand Theft World, where a forensic historian and a logic professor break down the week's news in depth and in context. There's a ton more there, so go check it out. And don't forget to get your Freedom Vault on the homepage.